Welcome back to Pete's Garage. Today, I'm going to be talking about propellers. We're going to talk about how to pick out a propeller as well as how to change the propeller on your outboard. We're going to be doing it on this 50, which will work if you have a Tahatsu 40 or 60. But if you have a different kind of outboard, you should definitely check your owner's manual. All right, look here. Propellers. You need one. Your outboard is pretty much useless without one. So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna to talk to you guys about, a little bit about propeller theory, how to pick out a propeller, um, different materials, different pitches, different sizes, different number of blades. Basically break it all down so that if you're trying to figure out which propeller you need, you've got a bit more information. Using the right propeller is crucial to the longevity of your outboard. So we wanna make sure that you've got the right one the first bit of information that we need to know when we're selecting a propeller is what the recommended wide open throttle range is for your motor. For the Tatsu 50, it is five to 6,000 RPMs. Your propeller needs may vary based on season, application, or load. So you might actually need more than one propeller for your motor. All right. Materials. Generally, propellers are going to come in one of three materials. Plastic, aluminum, or stainless steel. Plastic propellers are typically used on lower horsepower motors. Now, with those, it has the advantage of being inexpensive. Typically, with those motors, you're not looking for performance. A plastic propeller is not going to perform as well as some of these other propellers. But again, lower horsepower motor, it's not that big of a deal. They also tend to be a little more fragile and a little more flexible than an aluminum or a stainless steel propeller. All right, aluminum. It's gonna be lightweight. It's gonna be inexpensive. It's gonna have good all around performance as well as impact forgiveness. Now, the impact forgiveness can kind of be a disadvantage because if you hit something with an aluminum propeller, the propeller is gonna take the damage, which actually it's kind of an advantage now that we're going in a circle because if the propeller takes the damage the lower unit doesn't take the damage and you only have to replace the propeller which is a lot cheaper than replacing a lower unit two other disadvantages with an aluminum propeller are they're going to have some flex so they're not ideal for high performance and they're going to be more corrosive in salt water stainless steel now the prop that i run on the back of my skiff is a stainless steel prop Stainless steel props are great. They have great performance. They don't flex, they're durable, and they're corrosive resistant. So if you're using salt water, excellent prop. The disadvantages of stainless steel are they're, they're expensive. They're also heavier, so they're not ideal for lower horsepower. Then the final disadvantage is they have low impact absorption. So basically, if you hit something with this, you're more likely to cause damage to your lower unit than to your propeller. Next, we're gonna talk about diameter and pitch. Um, you're gonna see a number on these props and that number is gonna be the diameter and the pitch. All right, so the diameter is gonna be the first number and that's gonna be the measurement across the propeller or the basically the width of the propeller. Generally, a large diameter propeller is gonna be for a heavy load application and a smaller diameter is gonna be for lighter loads or performance. All right, so the second number is pitch. Pitch is how far the propeller is gonna move a boat with one revolution. Pitch is measured in inches. So a 13 pitch propeller in theory is gonna move a boat 13 inches forward with one revolution. Theory doesn't always apply in the real world and we have what's called slip. Slip is how much the propeller spins without moving the boat. Generally, a high pitch propeller like a 16 or 17 is gonna have better top end speed, whereas a low pitch propeller like a 13 is gonna have better torque, acceleration, and hole shot. All right, so your propellers are typically gonna come in either three blade or four blade. A three blade propeller is gonna be better for high end performance. Four blade propeller is generally better suited for a heavy load application, a high mounted situation, or better grip in the water. All right, to replace your prop, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter wrench, a 21 millimeter socket, a 3 8 torque wrench, needle nose pliers, side cutter pliers, 
a propeller, marine grease, and a replacement cotter pin. All right, so the steps to changing out a prop may differ based on your application or propeller type. Generally, the following steps are, are gonna work for you. All right, we're gonna get into changing the prop now. First thing, go ahead and make your life easy and trim that motor all the way up. If you, if you have a pulling platform, just be careful not to break your cowling. Obviously, as you guys can see, we got the cowling off right now. All right, as you can see, now I got this propeller at a good height so I can work on removing it pretty easily. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get this cotter pin out of the way. All right, so to take the propeller nut off, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter wrench. <clears throat> pull the propeller nut off. Next, we can pull this washer off. And then our propeller will come off. You wanna to check to make sure that there's no fishing line or any kind of debris down on this seal. If you do have anything down in there, it can eat through that seal, which can cause water to get into your lower unit. Now this kind of visual inspection, this is something that you should be doing every six months. And while you've got, while you're doing your visual inspection of the shaft, you should go ahead and do a visual inspection of your propeller. You should check for any chips, cracks, wear, tear, you wanna check in here for any kind of cracks, um, and then as, as well as any kind of corrosion buildup. And just keep in mind over time, especially if you're running a skiff and you're running in shallow water, over time you are gonna wear down your propeller blades, and so you may need to replace this propeller just due to wear and tear on it. And that's not gonna be as noticeable. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some marine grease, we're gonna put it inside of of this thrust washer and then we're going to slide it into place. Next we're going to take more of our marine grease and we're going to make sure we coat all of the splines. Next we're going to put our propeller back on. Once we got our propeller on, washer is going to go back on and then our propeller nut. When you're putting this propeller nut on, you're gonna to torque it down. You're gonna set your torque wrench to 25 foot pounds. And to help with this, if you got a piece of two by four, just slide it between your propeller and your calf plate. And this is gonna keep you from accidentally cutting one of your hands open on your propeller blades. And we're there. So once you hit 25 foot pounds, you gotta get your cotter pin in. You have to line the hole up with the castle nut. Now you can see that we're really close and if we backed off, we could line it up, but you never want to back off on a propeller nut. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten this down a little bit more to line this hole up with the next opening in the castle nut. All right, now we got the holes lined up. We're gonna go ahead and put our new cotter pin in. Next, we're just gonna bend one half of that up. We're good to go. Hope that helped you out. Thanks for following along in this maintenance series and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.